and welcome to another round of sports reviews. Tonight, I'm reviewing Clue Play on 3, Nekoxa 1. Leon wins, and it looks like they're finally turning it on at the right time. The goals were scored as follows in the 16th minute. Joel Campbell gets a ball in from Manessis. Ball gets to Campbell. He moves past the two center backs, moves to the side, takes a shot across the goalkeeper, goes in, far post, 1-0 Leon. Then in the 26th minute, Colombato gets the ball, pops up from the free kick off the player under the wall, pops up, Colombato heads it in near post, 2-0. That's the way it would go into the half. Then, in the 66th minute, Angel Mena scores. Gets the ball at the penalty spot. Bangs it past the goalkeeper. No chance. 3-0. Leon has the points. But in the 87th minute, Salas gets a header in. Ball crossed in. He heads it in. Kota can't do nothing about it. They do allow a goal late. But... Why does it matter? It's over anyway. 3-1's the score. Leon 3. Necoxa 1. The stats are as follows, and I'll get into what this match meant and what the table looks like. Yes, this is another scouting episode, of course. And yes, Toronto does know. We do know Toronto's facing Leon for Champions League. So this is the first game they played that we know. So here we go. 10 shots to 11, so Necoxa had one more shot, which is crazy. Wow. My mouse fell. Okay. Because I need it. Three shots on target to five. 71% in possession to 29% possession. 608 passes to 239 passes. 87% pass accuracy to 74% pass accuracy. 15 fouls to 19 fouls, two yellows to three, no reds, one offside to one offside, one corner to five. Pretty much, Leon dominated Necoxa from the outset. There ain't no question whatsoever. Leon just jumped on him from the start and kept on going. They did not stop. They wanted this match. With their fans coming back into the ground and all that, expected. I think this was to be expected, honestly. I expected Leon to beat Necoxa because they're just bad. Leon doesn't deserve to be where they were. Necoxa, on the other hand, does. They suck. They're bad. They're trash. Horrible. Absolutely putrid. They're lucky that relegation's not in Liga Emekis anymore, because if it was, they'd be going down like an anchor tied to graphite. Or, no, an anchor tied to a stone. Or whatever the hell you want to say. They'd be going down without a fight. But, well, I don't know about their relegation quotient, but... In, a, in the world that's all right and dandy, they should be going down without a fight. Um, they should be going down without a fight. They're horrible. And they showed it. Now, Leon is turning it on. I don't think this was just Necoxa being a shit team. A very Now, I'm going to say it. I don't give a crap. It's basically midnight. Nobody's going to watch this one. And if they do, you're a trooper or good morning. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, they're a shit team. They are a very shit team. <laughs> they are a very shit team. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna cut it. They're shit. They're absolutely horrible. I don't care. They're absolutely horrible. Absolutely putrid. I don't want to see them play another game of football ever again. Un well, next year, no. Whenever they get good, I may not even want to watch them play a game of football because they're still gonna play a trash game. My luck. So... I don't want to see him play a game of football ever again. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. But Leon's turning it on. I really do. The way they played was more like what I expect them to play like as champions, as defending champions. That's what I expect, a performance like that. Montez being back, did it make any difference? I'd say so. I'd say it did. Somebody was, people who were saying, we need Montez back. You were right. He's damn good. He is. 
the heart and soul of the team. I mean, he's captain, but he is the heart and soul. Him being gone, even though he didn't have any assists or goals at that point when he got hurt, you still needed him. He's kind of like Michael Bradley. You don't really see it on the score sheet, and you don't really see it from his ability, but he is the heart and soul. Wow, I can't believe you just complimented Michael Bradley. I know, I can't believe I did it either at this point. But he still is kind of the heart and soul of Toronto FC as the captain. I hate to admit it, or that's what most people think of him. I think Pozuelo is, but who gives a shit? Um, who cares? I don't think he is, but most people do. So we'll just go beyond that. Uh, so Montez is basically Michael Bradley, except you need him a lot more than we need Bradley, as you've seen. As you've seen. So there you go. Um, with that said, for me, this game was pretty much a domination from the outset. Leon did what they had to do. They're starting to wake up, and at the right time, they could be posing more of a challenge than I thought to Toronto FC. Now, do I still think we could beat them? Yes. Do we need to see what happens against actual good teams like Santos Laguna and Toluca? Especially Toluca, who I think is the best team actually in the Clausura right now. You're damn right. But we will see as it goes. Was this a one-off or they're actually waking up? We need to look at the results. And yes, I'll be able to watch that Toluca match because they pushed it a day before the 5th. It's the 4th now, so I can watch that match, do the scouting, then do the first leg preview of the Champions League for Toronto Leon, and then do Champions League coverage. So there you go. Um, that will be done. So speaking of that, let's look at the Liga Emeki's table now and their matches. So first place, Cruz Azul with 27 points. Second place, Club America with 25 points. Santos Laguna, 21 points. Monterey, 19 points. Toluca, 18 points. Atlas, 18 points. Puebla, 16 points. 7th place. Curitaro, 14th place. 8th, 14th point, 14 points, 8th place. Mazatlan, 14th, 14 points in 9th place. Club Tijuana, Zolos, 10th place, 13 points. Atletico San Luis, 11th place with 12 points, Tigres 12 points, last team in the Laguilla placements with 12 points, Chivas first team out, 13th place 12 points, Leon back in the thick of it, 11 points with these 3 points in 14th place Pachuca, 15th po place, 10 points Pumas, 16th place 9 points, Juarez 17th place, 9 points Necaja Necaxa 18th place, 7 points. Leon, let me... Or yeah, let's just duplicate it. There we go. Club Leon, their next matches, Santos Laguna, March 21st. I'd say best chance, that's a draw, but I think a 2, a 3-2 to two loss... With the way Leon's playing. Yeah. 3-2 to two loss. Toluca. April 4th. I'd say Toluca will beat them. Then Toronto FC on April 7th. At Estadio Leon. 7pm Central. 8pm Eastern. Atlas Leon on April 10th. Mm, Leon will probably get a draw out of that one. But I think we're fine. Toronto FC... Versus Leon in Florida, April 14th, 5 p.m. What stadium does that say? No, nah, it still says BMO Field for some reason. Hmm. They said it was Florida. Uh, of course, 15. Then after that match, Leon would play Juarez. I think they beat Juarez. I think Leon would beat Mazatlan. And I think they beat Carataro. And I think I'll put them into Laguilla. They'll have a chance to have a bicampeonato. Uh, do I think they'll get it? I don't know. I don't know. They'll be in the repechage part of the of the Laguilla. Will they win their tie? I think it's a one-leg affair, right? Because that's how Tigres got knocked out. Hmm. I'd say they'd 
at best finish ninth or tenth. So that would be eighth or seventh. At this point, that would be Puebla or Querétaro. I think they could beat them. At this point, the way they're playing, I think they could. Um, so for Leon fans, even if you may not, if you may get knocked out of the Champions League, you still have a chance in the Laguilla. I think they'll win their last three matches after the Champions League ties over. They'll probably beat Atlas four wins on the bounce. Besides the Champions League matches, I think that'll do it. A draw against one of Santos or Toluca, I think that's very possible. I'd say one loss besides the Toronto matches. I think Toronto could still win the tie. I don't think Leon would have too much confidence. I think they're getting enough confidence to where it's a challenge, but not too big of a challenge. Like, I don't want it to be a freaking... I don't want to be scared. But I do think, as it stands, I still think Leon's a better team on paper than Cruz Azul. We beat Leon, I think we get past Cruz Azul. I really do. I really do. On paper, even the games that Leon lost, they still controlled possession. Um, I'll say they're good. I'll say, you know, yeah. I'd still say they're better on paper than Cruz Azul. We get past Leon, I think we're going to the semifinals. But yeah, with that said, there you go. If you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends on Friday the 19th, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, Friday. I think it is because Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, Friday the 19th, Canada's Olympic qualifying tournament starts. I will be doing a live in RSR for, is it Honduras, I think? But whatever their first match is on the 19th, I may have gotten that wrong. I'm still doing a live in RSR for it. Canada, men's under 23s, under 24s, because, you know, the players that could have played last year but been 23 or 22 can play in the Olympics this year. They got the exemption because of COVID. So it's under 24s, basically, just for this year. Plus the three big ones, but you know that by the Olympics. So, live RSR for that Olympic qualifying match. I think it's Honduras. I may be wrong, but I may. I know Canada's playing on the 19th. I'm doing a live RSR for that one. So, there you go. If you liked it, I'm Ryan and I'm out. <laughs> Peace.